um, and sat with Fox. And you know, that took like maybe an hour and a half or whatever, an hour, maybe two. After I left there, uh, I drove down to DC uh -huh. and uh, I wrote with my publicist, um, Carla, let me shout her out. Um, when we got to DC, I did WHUR with Autumn Joy. So that's the radio station. So Yeah, I'm, I'm, I find all this stuff interesting. The, yeah. the, now you have a publicist too. So yeah, what, yeah, yeah, what, what, is yeah. the, what does a publicist do? Publicist is basically... For people that don't know, because I honestly yeah. don't even know what a publicist does. Your, your publicist is basically in control of like maybe your image and your, your press. They do everything with your press. So like she would be the one that's going to connect with the news stations. Right. Whatever radio stations and figure out if this is like an interview that fits my my personal brand. Whatever your brand is. Yeah. 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 Does this fit? You know, your publicist is, per is probably the person who like releases statements for you. Uh, if you need to clean something up, they do that. They tell you things to say, not to say. You know, but ultimately, I haven't got to that point where she got to tell me I can't say certain things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, that's what publishers well, do. Not yet. Control what not yet, man. Not yet. Not yet. Think, 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 not yet. But, but you know, knowing me, I don't say too many things out of pocket anyway. You know, like even when I was on the show and, you know, things go back and forth, I never respond. So I don't really have that issue. So she. That's that, that's that basketball swagger, bro. That's what that <laughs> is, bro. That's what that basketball really bad, swagger man. I'm real low key. I don't respond to it. Like, you know, playing basketball, you've been called absolutely everything. Especially when you're in like the opposing team's arena, you know. That's what I'm so, saying. Like you're like yeah. so when someone's doing something, you're like, yeah, right, get out of here, yeah, bro. I, like, you're, like why are you wasting my time? I, we're we're on camera. I, I ain't gonna respond I've to been that. Call worse, right? <laughs> you know. So like she is, she's doing a good job. She's still working on other things, which I can't, which I can't mention right now. Uh, but she's the one who connects to the radio stations, or um, if there's another show or whatever, she connects. And how, how did you, just because I'm curious, like, because I'm trying to obviously do my version of whatever right. it is you're doing, like, how, how does that, how does that come to, how does that relationship, like, come to fruition? In other words, like, you said that the, the, the TV people reached out to you because you were yeah. making enough ruckus on, on Instagram through your fitness thing. They're like, right. oh, this guy's got a good look. Right. He's an ex-basketball player. Right. He's, an, he's, a, he's a fitness dude. Right. This might be a good fit for this this whatever that we're doing, right. which is why they reached out to you. Right. Was it the same process with like the publicist? Yeah. So she, in other words, you made enough ruckus on the show and she's like, oh, you know, this guy's likable. I can actually do something with him. Yeah. And a then couple, she reach out, reach out to you. A couple publicists reached out to me. After the show, like you become like you're hot and they always tell you to strike the iron while you're hot. Okay. I can't say that I actually did that because after the show, it took a lot of de decompressing. So I kind of like went silent for a little bit. Luckily, I was popular enough on the show that people were still reaching out to me nice. and I had a couple publicists like reach out to me and I don't know anything about the entertainment industry at this point right you know and they're all talking to me and telling me what they can do for me and then putting a price on it right so I need this much and then we want to start working on your your digital press kit whatever it is yeah right whatever you know, the process and, is. and I'm just like man how do I know that you're going to do anything for me Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already went through a lot of things coming off of the show. So now I'm, like, second-guessing it. And I'm just like, I don't even know if I want to go that route. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, like, me being myself, all these opportunities have come. Like, do I really need to invest in you? And I don't even know if you're going to do anything. And I was like, maybe, let me, maybe I should just keep doing that. Right. Carla. Which, which is exactly the same thought process that I would have. Right. In the beginning, it should be that way. Yeah. You should, like, put all of your energy into, like, being what you want to be. But now, like, things get a little bigger. You need some type of direction. You need somebody that has connections that they can reach out to these people where you can give you the opportunity to speak. So Carla, when she, when she talks to me, she already represents a childhood friend of mine because he's a musician. Mm -hmm. So he called me first and let me know that she was going to call. And then when she called, she laid out everything, like what, her, what she'd seen she can do for me, uh, what she thought I can do, and it all aligned with things that I want to do. You get what I'm saying? And right. she didn't throw a price at me. She didn't do that, you know? She just laid everything out, like, this is what we're gonna do, this is what I wanna do, this is what I need you to do, we're gonna start immediately. I need you to get here by this day, I'll be in touch with you during the week. So that tells me that she got the same mindset that I got. She gonna grind it out just like I'm gonna grind it out. You know, basically when I start doing things, it's gonna be good for her too. Do you get what I'm saying? And right, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Right, and that's how yeah. it should be. It wasn't a money grab. It's yeah. not a money grab. Like, you know, ultimately it will be in the long run or, or like when things start to like connect, but right then and there, it wasn't, you yeah. know? And that's how I knew that like she was the one. You know, she was totally transparent. She was open. She was genuine. She did everything that she said she was going to do. She set up a whole photo shoot for me. Nice. You know, like she, she did, a, she put a lot of work into to like gain my trust. And, and that meant so much to me. It meant the world for me. 
Yeah, I've, I've, I've come to that myself a little bit now that I'm older. Yep. I realize now, like, uh, every relationship is a value exchange. I never really looked at it that way. Yeah. Never really looked at it that way. I looked at relationships as, like, just relationships. Like, hey, you're my brother, you're my sister, yep. you're my whatever, yep. you're my friend. But, like, now I've noticed it's, like, it, it's a value exchange. Even with your friends, like, you got to bring f value to them and they got to bring value to you. If you're at work, it's the same thing. If, 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 it, if it's not an even trade of some sort, like where you're both benefiting, then that relationship is going to fizzle and it's going to disappear. It's funny that you said that. Yeah. I say that all the time. Like in every relationship, it has to be uh, mutually beneficial. Yeah. You know, both sides. There's no two things that work together where only one side benefits and it survives. Okay? You got trees, you got humans. You know, we give them carbon dioxide, they give us oxygen. That's a relationship. We both benefit from each other, so you hit it right on the nail. Yeah, wow, dude. that's a that's a good little 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 analogy there. <laughs> I, got right? a ton of, I got a ton of. Hey, yeah, I was about to say, my man. <laughs> I was like, my man, my man, my man, my man's yeah. been on camera a few times. In case you can't tell, <laughs> he knows he knows his words right. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's cool. So now the publicist is like now doing their thing, and so now now you're on a new path of whatever. She's kind of, between the two of you directing on like, hey, we're headed in this direction. Yeah. Uh, do you plan on doing, well, you say you can't talk about too much about it, but do you plan on doing like more TV or For what? Sure. Yeah. Now she's open. This is, this is like a stepping stone. It may be um, a change in the path. Right. Okay. The goal stays the same. But just because there is an extra door in this path doesn't mean anything changed. Right. But it, when you open that door, it's like you see new things, things that you've never even thought of. So, you get what I'm saying? So, I, so, I wasn't so what's the goal? About, I wasn't thinking about TV. So what's the goal? Yeah, I'll tell you a little more about that in the long uh, run. All right. <laughs> but uh, I will say I definitely am open to doing more photo shooting and more um, reality TV. Uh, maybe not so much dating. I mean, I ain't going to count it out, but I'm open to all of it now. And just a year ago, I wasn't thinking about any of this. So right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, my goal is really to increase my personal brand. And how that's done or which lane that is, that time will tell. You know right. what I'm saying? So my ultimate goal for myself is to accomplishing everything is to make sure that I am prepared. Okay? Make sure that I am getting up. I am working hard and I'm staying true to everything that I believe in. Make right. sure I'm watching my podcast that is aligned with what I believe in so right. I can continue to move forward in a positive nature where I'm able to bring value to other people's life. Right. Okay? So right now I'm working on me and let everything else come as it should so when the opportunity does come and i know it's going to come because you got to think that way when it, when the opportunity comes you'll be ready for it yeah yeah it's, it goes back to what we said at the very beginning you know luck favors the prepared if you do the work like the all of a sudden you're like oh he's lucky not really it's like you didn't realize like a year ago like i go back to even this the the podcast here with this camera setup i originally met gene uh a year and a half ago maybe okay. give or take yeah i wasn't ready okay and he wasn't ready, even though he had a mindset of like, hey, this is what we're going to do. But I wasn't ready. But he kept grinding. I kept grinding. And then we somehow linked up and here we are. Now you're sitting here. Last week we had another guy here. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have the ex-MMA fighter plus right, right, a guy right. that does like private security. So it's like one of those things. It's like, oh, this is as long as you keep going in that direction, like the, the, the pieces will fall in on their own as long as you come with. I think with a good heart and just bring as much value as you can because that people are going to be like, oh, this guy's giving so much that I want to give back. And that's really what the goal is, you know, right. is it create that balance is more and more and more you get more. And that's, I think sometimes, especially like younger people, I think younger, uh, the younger version of myself didn't think like that. You know, I just thought about, I was being selfish, like me, 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 me. But I feel like now, in other words, if, 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 if I work on me, I'm, amplifying value to the world right and that value to the world now gets repaid back by value back towards me where i didn't think like that before before it was more like just all about me 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 when i was growing up yeah and now it's more like yeah it's still me 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 but it's me to like amplify my value whatever whatever the value is for me it's the fitness thing for me it's the jujitsu thing for me it's 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 branding for myself and the more value I can give off to the people that follow me, then eventually I'll meet more versions of you. Right. More, more MMA guys. So eventually I want to possibly try to tap into getting like UFC guys to kind of sit down and talk to me. That'll be dope. Right. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like, 
it's, it's a good value exchange. Like, hey, man, I give you exposure, we give me exposure, blah, 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 whatever it may be. But it just feels, feels good. But like, like you said, man, you just got to have that goal in the mind. And doors may open and close, but as long as that, that long-term goal is there, whatever that is, you right. just got to keep looking at it. Going, yeah, it's there. Just the path changed a little bit. Absolutely. I had to make a small left turn here. I had to make a U-turn. I had to go around the circle. <laughs> and, that, and that's the thing um, with, I guess, success <laughs> or how people, um, how people view success. They think it's a straight line and it's not. It's you know, not. you ultimately rise and you fall and you rise and you fall. Okay, everything is a cycle. Okay, your winning season is going to be short-lived and you will have a losing season. But with a circle, it always comes back around. So if you stay focused and keep grinding the way you're supposed to, you'll be back in that winning seat again. You know what I'm saying? But this time, you come with experience. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, so almost the, the win it, there is, is, is even bigger. Yeah. You're evolving. We yeah. are still evolving creatures. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when you work on yourself, you have to keep that in mind. Understand that you're going to make mistakes. Understand that the, that the goal doesn't change. You got to keep at it. And you got to keep getting better each day. And that's how you become successful in the long run. Yeah, that's another thing that I did that I learned from my boy Sebastian. That uh, and I and he gets it from that the basketball kind of because he was in college six years playing basketball. Right. And he treats regular life seasonally. Mm -hmm. So he every every season he rearranges his house. He rewrites like like something. Energy's changing. Right. We got we to gotta do something different. The energy of the summer is different than the energy of the spring. The energy of the spring is different than the energy of, of winter. And I never noticed that, especially when I was younger. When I was younger, phew, in my mind, it was just an another day, yeah. a day, another day, another day. But now I'm noticing, like, yeah, you're right. It just, it's peaks and valleys. Like, to me, where, where, where I'm working at now, mm -hmm. that was all my winter season. That right. was basically, all right, I got, I got to get to know these people. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure out what the process is. I gotta figure out what they're, what they're asking me to sell. I gotta figure out like who I'm, co who I'm working with. I gotta figure out like what the, the place is at. And now, now that we're in the spring, I'm like, all right, I'm good with. I don't need to learn the process no more. Now I need to figure out how to amplify. So like literally for this spring, I sat down and go, okay, I need to start prepping for the summer. Right. Like how do I? What, what are the steps I need to take in order for me to prep for the summer? Because I don't need to go through the learning process that I went through with, when I first started working there. Because now that's already kind of done. Right. And that's where it's like I went up a little bit. Finances grew a little bit. Uh, now it's falling down. Now I need to reevaluate like what's going on. So that boom, I get another peak. And then each peak, like you said, is just like slowly climbing like you know, hopefully year after year. That's really what the goal is down the road eventually. So you touched on two things. All right. All right? So my whole relationships over here. All right. Okay. Um, to reinvent. So it's not really about like reinventing yourself, it's more about rebranding. Right. So when the season changes, all right, like no successful company stays the same throughout its entirety, throughout its life. You understand what I'm saying? Coca Cola right. rebrands every five years. Right. So if billion dollar companies are doing that, then you need to do that too, right? Right. You get what I'm saying? So ultimately, working where we are now, as life has progressed, it has me here in Miami, I'm around a different crowd, and I still listen to these relationships. Okay, these relationships come with mutual beneficial values, right? So you're giving them value, but are you really taking in the value from them? A lot of times it isn't monetary. It might be information or knowledge of things that you um, wouldn't have learned if you weren't around them. And that's what I'm understanding now that I'm here in Miami, that it's not always about paper or um, ten like like things that you can like material things. Yeah, not tangible. Right, not right. tangible. But the words that's coming out this man's mouth is going to take me a long play. Because I'm listening to people who've become millionaires in a matter of three years. You understand what I'm saying? And listen to him. I understand that he did this in three years and he's only looking to continue his same career path that made him this money for another three years. At the end of this three years, it's going to change into something else. And he already has his mindset on what he's going to do next. Because every lane closes. Ooh. You know, but there's always a merge. Right. And you just got to merge into the next business with that same grind, nose down, hard hat, tenacity with everything. Like, yeah. And that's that cycle that I just spoke about. Yeah. I, I think of when you say that, I think of uh, this content creator called Alex Ramosi. Okay. That, uh, he talks about one of his company mantras or his staff mantras is do the boring work. And that's that's like it's a hard pill to swallow. But like yeah. there's stuff that like and, and it, it's uh 
it goes back to what I was saying about the t the check the checklist life. Right. It's like one of those is where like, if it's on the checklist, you just got to do the checklist, even though you may look at it and be like, oh, this is boring. But you got to do the boring work. Non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable. Yeah, you just got to do it, whether it's today, later this evening, tomorrow, something along those lines where you, no matter what, it's going to get done. Yeah. Um, and it's just do the boring work, and then all of a sudden you get a little, you get that little dopamine high, like when you complete it, you're like, yeah, I, I finished that task. And then all of a sudden you don't realize it. By the end of the month, you completed like ten tasks, instead of just like leaving that the the boring work, and it grows into this ugly monster in the corner because you just decided not to do it. Yeah. So yeah, man, that's great that you're around that. I'm around that. I'm, I'm a. I, it's cool to be around. That. That's one thing that I that I that I love about personal training is that, you know, obviously it's not it's not the cheapest thing to do. Right. So people, the people that are doing it are investing in themselves. Right. And you got to be a particular income bracket in order for for you to be consistently working with a trainer, and you get to talk to people and you see how their mindset is and and how they look at money and how they look at relationships and how they, you know, how they move and they they just move different. It's like a totally different animal. They just. They just view things differently, right? And it's it's uh, almost difficult to understand how they move until you really get to know the person, and then you're just like, and if you're just observing, you're like, oh, this person moves completely different, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you start viewing everybody else differently. You're like, yeah, you don't move the same like this guy over here, right? And this guy, this guy's like a multimillionaire in like right. f under five years, and you don't do bad, but you ain't that guy. Like what, and you and what, what you notice, what he was telling you is a little bit more visible mm -hmm. because you're able to kind of see the difference between that person and someone that's not. I've, I've, I would say like I have learned to um, put everybody in their own category. And I, I come into every relationship like blank. I don't know anything about this person. It's a, it's a blank canvas. And being in our industry where we're supposed to be ultimately here to help, and like I said in the beginning of this podcast, um, you're not successful until you bring value into other people's lives. I keep that in mind. Um, how can you bring value to someone else's life without listening to them? You understand? And, mm. and how are you able to listen to a person without cultivating a relationship? Like you got to build that rapport, correct? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, that's how I come into every day. I, I look to talk to like two to three people if it's, if it's in the gym or it's outside the gym. If it's just a hello or maybe the conversation goes a little deeper. If I get you to talk a little more and go a little deeper, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to listen. And then I ask questions based on the things that you've said that lets me continue the conversation even more and more. And that, that way I'm able to like get a lot more information. Yeah, but that's, that's, a, that's a skill that I feel has been uh, lost with the newest generation, man. Yeah. You know, we talk, I was talking to a few people. It's lost a little bit. People don't know how to socialize no more. It's weird. Like the new generation is like there's uh, they, they just don't they just don't have the social skills that that, that nope, they have. No, but you got to figure out how to like trigger that. Okay, as a man, okay, how can we get a man to like start socializing a little more? Like, what what do all men like? The rawness of it. Yeah, all men Mon like money, what? money and girls, unless okay, unless, they, unless we got money, switch hitter. We got women. So somebody's gonna wanna learn how to talk money and their finances, he's gonna have to learn how to talk and build relationships doing that. Then you have most men who love women. Like you gotta have some moxie to talk to women, right? Yeah. You have to have some swag, you have the ability to actively listen. So either way you have to be, you're gonna be able to teach these skills. You understand what I'm saying? It's just about relating to them enough to figure out what is their emotional trigger. And that's how you get, that's how we're going to get the new generation, um, the ability to socialize a little more. I hope so, man. Because I, uh, I got a kid, man, and he's, uh, he's 14. That's one of the things that I worry about for him, bro, on the real. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, uh, he spends a lot of time with his, his mom. Okay. Which, his mom's a good mom. Yep. But he doesn't have the, he, her and I, unfortunately, we've had, like, a, a tumultuous relationship. So I'm not in his, his life as much as I would like to be. Okay. And I can kind of see it that he's missing that like masculine energy mm -hmm. that he's like, even though he's old enough to be, you know, he's a teenager, right. but he's almost still kind of stuck in like kind of little kid land a little bit, okay. even though he's 14. So I, c I can see that he has like the new generational kind of like doesn't know how to move, doesn't know how to talk as much. And, it, and it's, it's, I hope that the social media and I hope people like you, mm. hopefully I can influence it down the road where 
basically I feel like the, the current generation of men don't have strong enough masculine energy to like emulate towards. Right. Like, like who can you think of outside of, you know, big boy that got, you know, banned everywhere. I don't even want to say his name just in case it causes a problem for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that, like outside of him, like what name, like, like name, like one, like one or two other people that have like Jordan Peterson, maybe. Oh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, it's but this, but it's you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's a limited digital. amount. Yeah, it's all digital. The problem, it's not, it's not as, um, like personal as it was when we were growing up. It's all digital. So especially since like you know the new the new generation, and uh, it's no slight to them because they are pure geniuses. Um, but it's all digital for them, so they're on YouTube most of the time. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like guiding people to look at their appropriate things, like not criticize how they move or criticize their lifestyle. Instead, we need to like, use their lifestyle to incorporate the values that we got from doing the things that we did the same way. You get what I'm saying? It's I all about- 100% get what you're saying. That's yeah. amazing. So another, yeah, in other words, that you're not trying to you're not trying to say, hey, this is how we did it. You got to do it like that. It's more like, how is it that you're doing? Let me show you the way we did it in your view, your channel, however you consume information. Exactly. It's all yeah. about emotional triggers. And you hear me say that all the time because yeah. like, that's how I go into every single conversation. You need to figure out how to motivate a person in the things that they like. Like, what's, what do they like is what's going to motivate them, not what you like. Right, right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you can get your message across, but you can't get your message across without listening to how they move first. Or, or watching them or I'm just trying to understand what they like to do. And then you need to go into what they like to do to find those qualities. You get what I'm saying? I think that's where people go wrong. We try to shun people into like how they should live instead of enhancing the way that they live already. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And like I said, man, I think, uh, I think hopefully people like you, people like me, yeah. and, and others that are kind of like put enough content out there and realize exactly all the stuff that you're saying. Everything mm -hmm. that you're saying is 100%. I know that if I was like 18 years old listening to what you just finished saying, is some of that is gonna seep into my brain and kind of affect how I move the next generation. I think that's one of the things that like the average guy has lost in the last, I wouldn't say like two, even my generation. I think my generation was like the first generation where that, that in-house masculine essence was like in the house. Mm -hmm. That I feel like men as a norm, we need other men yeah. Like we, we need like, you know, like my, my boy Sebastian, he checks me like for certain things that I do and vice versa. It's like the same thing with you. Like if you, if you and I are talking, it's like, you're going to make me, you're going to highlight something that's like, yo, why are you doing that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the same thing with like, uh, he, he likes the word, the OGs, yeah, yeah. you know, the, you know, it's just true. It's the older cats that they've been there, done that. And, um, how do you call it? And <laughs> sorry, so, someone was talking to me on camera, threw me off. <laughs> They, they educate you in order for you to kind of handle stuff your, your, your particular way, how they did it, so that they can cookie cut it for yourself. Right. So it's, it's good, man. It's, it's awesome, bro. So you just, you just spoke on a collection, and that's what it, it takes. So we always say, like, that we're losing essence in um, the lifestyle from before, and we're not. We're just speaking it in a different sentence. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is um, everyone used to always say it takes a, a village to raise a child. Right. And they say that is gone, but it's not. You just named it. It takes a collection of people. I can tell you right now, it took a collection of men and women to create who I am today. How many coaches did I have? How many of my mother's friends was I around? You get what I'm saying? That every person that you- Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you liked that clip. And if you'd like to see another clip, please go here. Or if you'd like to watch the full episode, you can also go here.